Welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 87 for four. So today guys, I want to do a video for you guys and during the international break because I know a lot of people don't really like the international break. So I decided I'll make one club video for you guys kind of discussing about the events that have taken place from the October international break to now. So I figured it's a good time for you guys to sit back and enjoy, get your drinks ready, get your meal guys, because it'll be a long video guys. I'll be going through a lot of stuff. We can talk about the top four leagues in detail. Then I'll touch about League On, touch about the, uh, the Turkish Super League, touch upon Eredivisie, and touch upon um, League of Portugal. So, if you guys do enjoy, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And we're going to start first with the EPL, man. We're going to start first with the EPL. Liverpool. Um, can they actually do it, guys? I still think for Liverpool, it's a bridge too far. I still don't think they can win the Premier League. But here's the thing. Liverpool are five points for the top of the table. And they're looking so amazing. Liverpool is looking great. Salah is, is in the Salah is looking so amazing. And guys, we have to have an honest Salah conversation, guys. If Salah managed to get Liverpool to win the Premier League, we need to have a discussion on the channel that happens at the end of the season. Because we're the Salah rank among all time Premier League players. Because if he gets this Liverpool team to win the Premier League without Sadio Mane and without Roberto Firmino, that would be an incredible achievement. Because I think for Liverpool, what makes me very what makes you really skeptical of them to win the league is because I just don't feel like Mane and Firmino or as I just don't feel like Gakpo and Nunes are on the level of Firmino and Mane, especially Mane. I think Mane's goals was huge and instrumental. But Liverpool, man, this has been a great start. You know, I think I heard that this is the best start Liverpool have had with their new manager, Arna Slot, in a long time. And so maybe Liverpool can do this, do it this season. You know, maybe they can't, but... We'll see how Liverpool does because I think of the December game, guys. We play against Manchester City at the Anfield. That's a huge game. They have to win that game. They have to win the game, in my opinion, if they want to win the Premier League. And so for Liverpool, man, amazing job what they've done. Because let's be real, Liverpool at the end of the start, at the start of the season was very underestimated. A lot of people are saying Liverpool, they're gonna probably barely get top four. They may even not even get top four. And look what they're doing right now. Arnold Slot's doing an amazing job in his first season. And let me just say this right now. If Arnold Slot manages to win the Premier League, and his first season, we're going to have to. That's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. We'll be to Manchester City. Here's the thing with Manchester City, guys. You can see that this team is depleted with injuries. You know, obviously, Rodri being the main guy. But people are also not forgetting that Rodri's out. Uh, Stones is also out. I believe Ruben Diaz is also out. And Kyle Walker. We have to have an honest Walker discussion, guys. Walker's been very, very poor this season. He's just not been that great. Rico Lewis has not been great either. And City are struggling with injuries, as well as KDB. He's not been playing that much. He just came back from injury. And now, the thing for City is that they're still the favorites because they've done it four times in a row. And what makes City so difficult to beat is that in the second half of the season, they usually go on a massive winning streak. First half of the season, they're usually a bit, you know, a bit dicey. But the second half is where they go on a massive winning streak. And the thing with City is that they rarely lose. Rarely lose, guys. City don't lose that often. And City usually get a lot of wins. And so for a thing for the for Manchester City, man, it's four losses in a row, man. This is the first time ever for Pep Guardiola. Back to back losses the Premier League. I mean, it's been a long time since they've been able to say that. So I think for Manchester City, I still think they're the favorites to win this Premier League. Um, but they're gonna have to invest big in the giant window. Because I think if they don't make any signs of the giant window, it may be tricky for the Manchester City to do five in a row because Rodri's pretty much out for the season. So will Manchester City buy a replacement in January? Then I think it, because I would assume they would. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Because the thing is, like, there's no one on this team that's on the level of Rodri. That's no one that can do that kind of uh, pass-making, play-making, defensive interceptions, and all that stuff. There's no one on this team that's capable of Rodri. So, it'll be interesting to see what Manchester City do in that sense. But I still think Manchester City are the favorites to win this one, really. And, yeah, like I said, guys, that's my thoughts there. Then moving to Arsenal, man. Um, Arsenal, I still feel like this team is out of the they're nine points behind Liverpool. And Arsenal, I know Arsenal had a very difficult month. You know, they had to play against, I think, three of the top, the two of the top six teams this month, you know, Chelsea and Liverpool. But here's the thing. You had Newcastle. Newcastle haven't been great this season. And Bournemouth is a team you should be beating. The fact that Arsenal get a single win in this month is very concerning. It's very concerning. Very concerning. And for Arsenal, I think the only good thing for this month is that Odegaard's back. And Odegaard is huge because... This might be an unpopular opinion, and I might get a lot of dislikes for saying this, but I'm going to say this right now. Odegaard is Arsenal's best player. It's not Bukayo Saka. Now, Bukayo Saka is the, the better goal scorer. I will give you that. 
But in terms of overall player, who's more important to the team? So, uh, Odegaard's more important because not only does Odegaard provide you that ingenuity and like, create a spark, he's also the captain of this team. Keep in mind, Saka isn't. And I just feel like Odegaard for me is so much more important. I mean, we just saw in the yesterday game against Chelsea how crucial he was. He made that pass for Martinelli. He made that pass. And look at Saka. Saka did nothing against Chelsea. So my thing is that for um, Arsenal in particular, I think if they want to win the Premier League this season, they have to improve the offense. Because defensively, they look great. I think Gabriel Saliba are looking great. It's just the offensive. Offensively, they're just not great. Like High Havertz, I feel, is a moments player. Gabriel Jesus is mid. Martinelli is mid. Even though Martinelli did score against Chelsea, I still don't think he's that great. And Arsenal need more goal scorers in this team. They need more goal scorers in this team if they want to win the Premier League. And I feel like they just don't have enough goal scorers on this team, which is the reason why I don't have them to win the Premier League. So I think for Arsenal, if they want to win the Premier League, they have to be more well-rounded in the goal scoring aspect. And they have to continue being good at set pieces because that's what makes Arsenal so good is that set pieces are very good at. And so that's my thing with Arsenal, man, because Arsenal, man, it's not been great. And so we'll see what happens. And then moving to Chelsea, man. I think Chelsea, I'm pretty confident saying that Chelsea will get fourth. I'm pretty confident saying that Chelsea will get fourth. I think Enzo Marisco is going to have a fantastic job with the team. You can see that Palmer and Nico Jackson are really firing all cylinders. I think the one thing for Chelsea they have to improve is the defense. The defense is very shaky because I don't rate Robert Sanchez. And I don't, I feel like Badia Shield and Colwell are a bit suspect at times. Okay. And also, I feel like Reese James is a bit unreliable because Reese James is so injury prone. I think Chelsea defensively are, is a big question mark. Other than that, though, I think they're feels great. I think Kaiseido Lavia has done a great job. I think their attack, Nico Jackson, Cole Palmer has been great. Although I will say, I think I don't think Matawek has been that great. I think Matawek may need to ride the bench. And Pedro Neto has been pretty good as well. So I think for Chelsea, if they could get, if they can improve that defense and not make stupid mistakes there and you know be solid, then I think Chelsea can um, definitely push for a top. Four. They'll definitely put, they'll definitely be for a top four. Do I think where they have what it takes for a title? Of course not. They're this team. As for they need more well rounded, this team is not as talented as Liverpool, Man City, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, Chelsea, man, like I said, I think they're the favorites to get top four. So, looking at the Premier League table right here, guys, this is the Premier League table for you guys. So, let's just quickly look at the other teams real quick. So, Nari Forest, man, fantastic season for them. Do I think they can get European football? Probably not, but I think they can finish on the top 10. I think they have what it takes. The same goes for Brighton. Brighton have been so good to see. Brighton have been great. Fulham is also looking pretty good as well. Shout out to Fulham. Newcastle, Newcastle, a, uh, they're still in it. I think they could get European football, but I'm not quite sure what European football they're going to get. Are they going to get Europa League or Conference League? At the moment, at the time of this recording, I'm probably going to lean towards more Conference League, but they could definitely get Europa League. Aston Villa, I think they're in contention, looking good. Although they've been kind of struggling recently with the results. Uh, Spurs, man, Spurs are so inconsistent. I mean, they literally beat Manchester City. They beat Aston Villa, and then they lose to Crystal Palace, lose to Ipswich. Like Spurs, man, you're so inconsistent. So Spurs are going to struggle. Actually, you know what? Spurs might actually get that conference as well. They're Brentford, Bournemouth looking good. Uh, man United, man, struggling, man. 15 points is crazy in 11, 11 games played. So it's interesting. So if I had to give like a prediction how those other European spots are going to be like, I would probably say it's a combination of United, Newcastle, Spurs, and Villa. I would say probably those four teams will probably finish from fifth to eighth. And then maybe you could spring in a, a Villa or a Brighton. But the thing is, it's so competitive. It's so difficult to call that anything can happen. So it wouldn't surprise me if one of those teams misses out. But I would, if I had to make, a, if, if I was a betting man, I'll probably bet with those teams. Uh, the West Ham, Leicester, Everton, and Switch, Palace, Wolves, Southampton. So Southampton, uh, Wolves, ooh, struggling, man. Struggling. So shout out to Ipswich, man. Ipswich, just one point above. Um, Palace is crazy. So hopefully Ipswich can stay up. But unfortunately, I think they'll go down. And I do think. This might be the time for Wolves to go down. This may be the time, but we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. So those are my thoughts on the EPL. Moving to La Liga, man. Um, Barcelona have been looking great. Barcelona have been looking great. Now, we did have the small blip yesterday against Real Sociedad where we lost 1-0. But I think Barcelona, for the most, Barcelona, for the most part, have been looking so I think Barcelona have been looking so good this season. Offensively, we're looking good. Rafinha, Yamal, Lewandowski. Probably the best front three in the world. And Caceres has been amazing. I think Kubaris and Yago Martinez. Koundé's been great defensively. Um, Baldi's looking good. I think the only little blemish for Barca is the depth. I think we're kind of realizing that this team needs more depth. And there's been a certain calm that's been going around. Is that, is this team Yamal FC? And that 
See, Yamal is one of our best players, but I think to say this team is Yamal FC is a bit rich too far because you still have to look at the contributions of Lewandowski. You still have to look at the contributions of Rafinha, Casado. They've also been great. But I think the issue is we still need Yamal. Even though we're not Yamal FC, we still need Lamine and Yamal this team because he's one of the best players in the world right now. His, his vision, his intelligence, the 17 year olds are all crazy. And you can see how much Yamal is necessary for this team. Because for Barca, man, as I said, man, we've just been scoring so many goals at regular basis. And I think it's fair to say that we're the favorites for La Liga. I think we're the favorites for La Liga. And I think we should be able to win this league. And now I'm going to be interested to see how Barca will do the Champions League. The Champions League is a pretty, that's where we're going to get truly tested. Truly, truly tested. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to see what Hansi Flick is doing with Barca. Because coming into the season, guys, I was very skeptical of Barca this season. I was thinking that... Oh, this is going to be a really a nightmare. We may go back to back trophy list seasons and everything like that. I wasn't confident. But yeah, it's looking good, man. It's looking good for Barca. And I'm, I've been very, very happy with Barca done so far this season, man. So we'll see if Barca can continue the good form and post November. Moving to Real Madrid. Um, Killing Mbappe, man. Killing Mbappe just has been struggling. He's been struggling so much this season. And Real Madrid just don't look as good as we had thought they would be. And I think the issue for Real Madrid is Mbappe is really disrupting the balance of this team. This Real Madrid team just don't look as good with Mbappe in it. And it feels like Mbappe is like swinging the pendulum, right? Because we just saw what Vinicius did up here last week, a few days ago. He scored a hatcher against Osasuna. For me, I don't care what anyone says, Vinicius is Real Madrid's best player. He is Real Madrid's best player. You can see how much he carries this team, his goal scoring productivity, his offensive threat, and everything like that. And for Mbappe in particular, man, I just don't know what's wrong. Because Mbappe, you can come up with a position excuse all you want that, oh, I'm not playing my right position. You know, I've been playing as a striker and I'm a left winger. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. But the thing is, Madrid have tried you out in different positions. You've tried, you've, they tried you as a left winger. They tried you as a striker. They tried you as a right winger. They even put you as a two up top. And it's still not working out, Mbappe. So you yourself have to improve. Because Mbappe, you need to realize that Real Madrid is bigger than you. You're not bigger than Real Madrid. You're, you're not just going to come in here and expect the team to be catered to you or centered around you. If anything, you need to you need to focus on the team itself. you got to uh, contribute. Because Mbappe, you are a World Cup winner. You're age 19. I, we have standards for you. And guys, you know, I've been hearing people say this, which I think is absolute blasphemous, that we should give him grace. We should give him grace of time. We should give him some leeway. You know, it's his first season of Real Madrid and everything like that. Okay, if you were like, at like, let's say 19 or 20 or 17, okay, fair enough. But you're, dude, you're 25. You're literally in your prime years. You're entering your prime years. You shouldn't, we shouldn't have to give you this amount of grace period. You need to be performing at this club. And if you don't perform, you got to get out. It's as simple as that. And Mbappe, if you, if, because guys, there could be a situation Carlo, he, Carlo benches him. Carlo benches Mbappe. And it's going to be interesting to see what Real Madrid do. Because let's be real, guys. I think Real Madrid fans have to accept that La Liga is almost done. La Liga is La Liga is not going to... They're not going to win La Liga this season. So now it all comes down to the Champions League. At the Champions League, Real Madrid need Mbappé to perform. Uh, because Real Madrid, we know how good they are in big games. And so it's going to be interesting to see what Mbappé does. Because Real Madrid, man, this could be a bad season for them. Could be. Could be. But we'll see how the season ends. Let's not get too out of ourselves. Because there's still a lot of seasons to go. And for killing Mbappe, man, you have to start improving fast. Because if you don't, you may get benched. And that's going to look very bad. It's going to look very, very bad if you get benched at Real Madrid. Moving to um, Atletico Madrid, man. Atletico Madrid, man. I'm still not convinced of this team. I'm still not convinced. I believe they're like several points behind. They're like, they're like seven points behind Barca. I've just not been convinced of Atletico Madrid. Especially on the road. Their away form is quite shaky because how are you tying to how are you, you're losing to Real Betis on the road? And I think they also tied, I believe, uh, games ago. Like Real Atletico Madrid are just looking very much inconsistent on the road because their home form is amazing. Like we can't forget their home form. Home form wise, quite amazing. It's just their away form is what worries me for Atletico Madrid. And Atletico Madrid are just feeling like just kind of just doing the bare minimum. Of views. Like, okay, we'll just win, but we'll just do the bare minimum. We're not going to win in a convincing fashion, you know? And for Atletico Madrid, do I think they can still win La Liga? They're technically, mathematically in contention, but realistically speaking, I don't think they're going to win it. I just think for Atletico Madrid, if they want to win La Liga, they have to improve their waveform if they really want to win this league, in my personal opinion. 
And Julian Alvarez, man, he's looking good, man. He's finally coming in good goal scoring form. And so it's good to see Brad Leco Madrid that he is coming in with those crucial goals. And we just scored yesterday against Mallorca. Villarreal, man. Um, Villarreal are really looking great. I think Villarreal, I'm ready to say they're going to get top four. And I think they're going to finish in the top four because what the key thing for Villarreal this season is that they don't have any European. And I think that's a blessing in disguise because they can put all their focus in the league and don't have to worry about the European competitions. And for Villarreal, man, they're looking amazing. I've been really, really impressed with what Villarreal have been doing. And I think Villarreal have been fantastic. I mean, they just beat Ad Dempa through all of this. You know, and I believe their only two losses this season, I believe. Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong with this. I believe it's been to Barca and to Real Madrid. I think every other game, they haven't they got a result in. So that, that actually shows you how important. How massive Villarreal have improved. And remember, in the opening game of the season, they tied against Atletico Madrid at their stadium. So, Villarreal, man, I've been very impressed with that. And I would love, I want to see them back in the Champions League because it's been some time since we've seen them back in the Champions League. So, looking at the La Liga table right here, guys, you can see Barcelona is with 33 points. We have a six point gap over Real Madrid. Although, Real Madrid do have a game in hand. So, let's, uh, Real Madrid have the game in hand against Valencia. Obviously, Valencia have two. Uh, so it was, uh, games to postpone. They have two games to play. So Valencia is in the relegated 20th in the league, but you know they have two games at hand. So let's not be too harsh. And looking at the other teams, man, I think fifth to seventh is where it gets interesting because Osasuna is looking really good. Osasuna is looking very solid. I've been impressed with Athletic Club has been kind of underwhelming this season, but they're still in their Real Madrid. Real Sociedad. That's a massive win for Real Sociedad because I believe prior to that Barca game, they were like I think 12th or 13th, and now they put themselves in ninth. Sorry, eighth, which is huge. Mallorca, Girona, Celta, Rafael Valcana, Sevilla, Leganes, Sergio Alves, Las Palmas, Getafe, Espanol, Real Valladolid, and Valencia. So, if I had to give a prediction for how the European spots will finish in the 5th to 7th, I'll probably say that I think Real Betis, I'll probably edge them with 5th. And then I think 6th will be Sociedad. And the 7th might be Atletico. I think also Suna may just miss out on European football. And the reason why I'm going Batiste associated above Athletic Club is because I think Athletic Club will prioritize the Europa League. I think they'll prioritize the Europa League, and which is the reason why I think they'll not do as well in the league. And I think Batiste associated at, I think Batiste is just going to, uh, Batiste will have an easy time in the Conference League. And that's why I put Batiste over associated at. And I think associated at will round up a six because I don't think they'll do that well in the Europa League. So we'll see how the table turns, man, because this is very competitive, man. It's very competitive from uh, everything. So it will be interesting to see how those. European spots unfold. Now we move on to the best league in the world. Syria. I mean, take a bow, Syria. I mean, Napoli has been so good this season. Napoli has been fantastic this season. And I'm really interested to see what Antonio Conte does for this team. Because if Antonio Conte gets Napoli to win a league title in his first season, that would be an incredible achievement. And I just did some research, guys, last night. Napoli won three league titles in their history. Antonio Conte gets them to win their fourth title. That would be an incredible achievement. And we're going to have to have a combo on this because... The fact that Antonio Conte is doing this well with the likes of Lukaku, McTominay, former Man United players, is crazy to say. Kavar Scully looking good as well. Uh, the goalkeeper, uh, Maris looking good. Napoli just looks so good this season. But my only issue for Napoli is, do I think they have what? It, do I think they're that consistent? Because the thing for Napoli is that what's really in their their favor is that they have no European football. Napoli have no European football, and I think that's a huge blessing for these guys. I'm fairly confident that Napoli will get top four, but can they push for a title? That remains to be seen. Because I still feel like we are yet to see Napoli play. We were yet to see. Can Napoli win those games against the top teams like Inter, Juventus, and Milan? Now, I know they beat Milan, but Milan haven't been great this season. I think for Napoli to win this league title, they have to beat the big teams like Nap Inter, Juventus. And draws are good and all, but they have to win those games. So we'll see how Napoli can do that. Uh, Inter, man. Shalanaho, man. Inter have not been as good as I thought they would be this season. Now, they're still in the race. They're obviously one point behind Napoli as a time of recording this video. But I think for Inter, what makes me very concerned with them is that defense will be looking very shaky. Inter are not as good as defensively as they were last season. And I think that's a huge issue for them. Because I believe I read the stat. Inter haven't conceded four goals in a game since 2020. And they conceded four goals in Derby Mandela, the Derby against Juventus. So... For Inter, as I said, man, I think that also another reason why Inter has not been doing that well this season is Lautaro Martinez. Lautaro just hasn't been the same as last season. Lautaro was so amazing goal scoring wise. Then I think in the the the, la the early stages this year he wasn't been great, and now Lautaro is kind of struggling in goal scoring form. So I think for Inter to win this league title, Lautaro has to up it up. And I still think Inter the favorites. I still think Inter have the best squad in Syria, 
but it's going to be competitive. It's not going to be as straightforward because I think Inter is going to have to really push it all the way to the final match today. I don't think it's going to be a breeze like last season. So Inter are looking good. And let's see how Zaga can do. Can he get Inter to win back-to-back -back titles? I don't think, and remember, no Serie A team has done back-to-back -back since Juventus did, uh, which was, I think, the 19 and 20 season. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, the moving to Juventus, man. Juventus are looking good. I said this before, guys. Juventus defensively midfield-wise is great. I just need to see more from them for the best time. Because I'm sorry to say, if you're relying on Vlaovic to win a league title, it's just Vlaovic is hit or miss. He's not going to score in every game. Now, we're seeing players like Way uh, step up. We're seeing players like Mike Yoldi step up. And we're seeing these other players. Yield does as well. But these players, <clears throat> I don't think are consistent enough. I don't think they're consistent enough to produce goals in every single game. So for you, Juventus, man, kudos to them. They're one of the few teams that are unbeaten in the top five leagues. I think them and PSG and Bayern are the, un the other unbeaten teams. So Juventus can win this league title. And if, if Monta gets Juventus to win the league title, that's going to be huge. Juventus have not won a league for quite some time. Do I think they're going to win the league? No. I think for Juventus, I feel like this team is better for a cup competitions. I think this team is better for cup competitions than league. I think league-wise, they're. I think they're going to do better in the Champions League than Inter. That's actually one of my hot takes. Is I actually feel too better because of how good the defense and midfield is and everything like that. And I feel like Inter may pride towards the league. So it'll be interesting to see what Juventus does this season. And I'll need to keep a close eye on them. The Milan, man. Uh, Milan has been looking good. Milan's been looking good. But I feel like this Milan team, as good as they are, they're not ready for a title. I think title charge is a bit too far. I don't think they have what it takes to compete for a title. I think it's a three-horse race between Juve, Inter, and Napoli. And I think for Milan, what makes them very interesting is that Pulisic. Pulisic has done an amazing job this season. The team, he's done so well. And I think Liao is finally starting to get into form with his last few games against Real Madrid and then Cagliari on the weekend. But for Milan, what really worries me the most of this team is defensively. Defensively, they're very, very sketchy they can see too many goals and that's the reason why i don't think milan can compete for elite towers because of how bad they are defensively and everything like that and i also forgot to mention man napoli's defense is really solid so looking at the league table right here guys napoli has looking great you know 26 points amazing so far this season great i think they've only had two losses to verona and adelante adelante's second is amazing guys I'm, I'm, I would love to see Adelanto win the league title, but I don't think they will. They're too inconsistent. But if Adelanto does win the league title, that'll be amazing. Because I don't think they've ever won the league title in their history. So Gasparini, that'll be a fantastic job for Gasparini and Adamalo Lukman as well. Fiorentina is also looking pretty good as well. They're not going to win the league title. They're wait. They're not going to be. They're not going to be consistent throughout the season. Inter's looking great. Lazio, Lazio is also looking great as well. And look at how competitive the top six are. Look at how close it is, guys. 26, 25, 25, 24. Lazio also looking pretty good as well. It's actually interesting to see how Lazio is doing well without Shira Mobley, one of the key players. He's now gone. And also remember, they don't have Brizzi Sarri anymore, so they're actually doing well. Juventus looking great. Milan, Bologna. Now keep in mind, Milan, Milan and Bologna do have games in hand. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then Udinese, uh, Empoli, Serena, Roma's down bad. Man. Roma's down bad. They finally got rid of Juric. Uh, they're going to get a new coach. We'll be interested to see who their new coach is. At. I've been hearing rumors that might be Roberto Mancini, which... I'm not sure if that's a good manager upgrade, but um, it's sadly better than Juric, but I'm not sure if that's a good decision for Roma. Then Parma, Verona, Como, Cagliari, Genoa, Lecce, Monza, and Venezia. So, I mean, the Serie A is looking very competitive, man. This, in my opinion, guys, this is the best league. It's the most competitive league, and I'm very interested to see how this one unfolds. And I'm definitely going to keep, definitely going to watch more Serie A this season. As much Serie A as I can this season, guys. Serie A is popping up, man. Serie A is popping up. Moving we'll to the uh, Bundesliga, man. Bayern Munich looking great. Bayern Munich looking great, guys. They've been so far amazing. You know, after they tied against Leverkusen 1-1 at home, a lot of people said, eh, it wasn't a great result. But Bayern have really proven it wrong since then. You know, they destroyed Stuttgart. They destroyed Bochum. Kane is looking great. Um, they've been kind of struggling. They, they kind of barely beat off. Uh, um, was I think um, St. Pauli over the weekend, 1-0. But Bayern are looking great. Kane is looking good. Olise is looking good. Musial is looking good. And I think Bayern looking pretty good. And I think it's, it's fair to say the guys that Bayern should win this league title. Because look at the other Bundesliga teams. They've been fairly disappointed, which we'll get on to in a bit. Leverkusen, man. I, I don't know what's wrong with Leverkusen. I don't know what's going on with Leverkusen. Because even though the team hasn't lost any critical players, you could just tell that I think this Leverkusen team, I just think they're feeling the after effects. I, think, I just think they're feeling burnt out. I think they're just a gassed out for what they did last season, having to push all the way for those for that incredible unbeaten streak. And I think this season Leverkusen is trying to replicate it, but it's just 
they just don't it's just so hard for them to do you know and i think for leverkusen they're realizing that winning a league title because i've always said this before i'm going to continue to say this again defending your league title is harder than winning the football league title and that might seem crazy to say but it really is difficult because there's very few teams that can defend the league title barcelona can do it on a regular basis manchester city can do it at juventus and i suppose psg and leverkusen to Bayern. there's only a handful of teams that can do it there's a reason why it's so difficult to do it. And I think there's increased pressure on Leverkusen, and I think the pressure is getting to them. Leverkusen, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because they've been struggling this season. I still think they'll get top four this season. They're going to obviously get top four, but I don't think they're going to win. So I think Leverkusen, they're just feeling the after effects. And they just tied over the weekend to Volkheim, and I think they tied a few weeks ago to Stuttgart as well. So yeah. I thought Frankfurt, man. I mean, I got to be honest with you. Frankfurt's a team that I've been really impressed with this season. I think Frankfurt as a team that a lot of people are sleeping on this season. I think Frankfurt's a team that I think could surprise a lot of people, especially Omar Marmouche. Omar Marmouche is one of the most informed players right now in the world. That guy has been banging in goals, banging assists. I mean, Frankfurt looking amazing, guys. I'm really hope I'm really excited to see what Frankfurt does. I mean, they got a huge win of the weekend, 3-2 against Stuttgart. And we know how good Stuttgart is. They're in the Champions League. And remember, Stuttgart is very good at home. Guys. Stuttgart's very good at home. So the fact that Frankfurt actually managed to win away in Stuttgart is incredible. So I think Frankfurt is going to get top four. Um, and then Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig are obviously great, but Leipzig are just not consistent enough to push for a title. They're going to get top four probably. And yeah. And then Dortmund, man. I don't know what to say with Dortmund. These bumps, man. The, the yellow bumps in front of my opponent. Because Dortmund, man, I don't know what's up with them. They're so bad on the road. I don't even think they've got an away win this season, guys. That's how bad Dortmund is. And there's a reason why they're seventh at the table. Because Dortmund, they're great at home. The home form is amazing. They're one of the best in form, one of the best home teams in the world, probably. But when it comes to on the road, Dorman is very, very, very fragile. Very shaky. I don't know what's up with them, the Dorman. Sure, I know they had the red card of the weekend against Mines, Emery Chan there, but that was still very bad. To lose to Mines? I mean, it's Mines after all, guys. So for Dorman, man, it's going to be interesting. And guys, I dare Dorman to finish back to back seasons well. It's awful. Because I actually think it could very well happen. It very well happen. It would be very dangerous for Dortmund fans to accept. So look at the league table right here, man. Byron's looking great, guys. Byron is cruise control. 26 points. They already have a five-point lead, guys. Five-point lead. Leipzig second. Frankfurt third. Leverkusen fourth. And then Freiburg in your Berlin, guys. Dortmund is 16. They're already uh, one point off the top four. I mean, it's still pretty close, to be fair. But dang, like 10 points behind Byron is already interesting. Bremen, Gladbach, Mainz. Stuttgart, Stuttgart not having a great season, but you know, they're back to the Champions League for so long. Wolfsburg, Augsburg, Heidenheim. Heidenheim was also struggling. Hoffenheim has been so bad this season. I've been very just with Hoffenheim. St. Paul, the Holsten, and Keon Volkheim. So I think the relegation is kind of straightforward, but I think teams that have been really underperforming are Hoffenheim and Stuttgart in particular. I think those are the teams that are shocking the most, and probably Dortmund as well as some fan. Union Berlin is doing amazing as well. Union Berlin as well, when they barely survived relegation last season. So I'll be to see, see what happens. And then we move on to PSG, man. League on. Now, here's the thing. I have to be honest with you guys. Luis Enrique, you can criticize him for all you will for the Champions League. Champions League wise, he's been a failure. But in terms of League on, PSG have done very well. PSG have done very well in League on with Luis Enrique. Because the last couple of seasons without Luis Enrique, they just haven't been that great in League on. Like, remember, Poch lost the league title. Poch barely won the league. And then Galtiero barely won the league as well. Like, we haven't seen PSG this go in the league for quite some time. And the fact that PSG are doing so well, they're unbeaten as well. And guys, I think PSG could actually end the season unbeaten, which I don't think has ever happened before in league on history. And ever before. So, Luis Enrique, if you can get PSG to do an unbeaten season, that will be a very impressive achievement. Because we know how difficult it is to go unbeaten. Only a few teams have been able to do it. I think Juventus have done it, Milan have done it, Leverkusen have done it, and obviously Arsenal have done it. Not even a La Liga team has done it, which is crazy. So, PSG, man. They're going to win the league on, but we'll see. How, let's see if they can do unbeaten season. I think that's one of the most interesting guys. And for PSG in particular, man, side note here. They better finish the top 24 because if they don't finish the top 24, that would be embarrassing. And the other league on teams do, they should be embarrassed. Moving to the Turkish Super League, man. Galatasaray, man, looking great. Galatasaray's looking great. Osman is really firing on cylinders. And I think Galatasaray are looking very good for the league. Ferran Bacce, I just feel like for me, the Ferran Bacce don't have what it takes. They're just ball players in the day. You know, they have them in the league since 2010, guys. And it pains me to say this, guys, but they may be the Turkish Spurs. They may be the Turkish Spurs, guys, because they have so much potential. They have so much promise. 
but they're just not performing well, man. And Jose Mourinho, man, I just feel like for me, man, he's just not been cutting it, man. And I think they're already five points behind that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they're already five points behind is already crazy. And Gals Hester, man, looking great. Victor Austin is looking great. And yeah, I think um, Gals Hester is going to win this, unfortunately. But um, I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong. Then moving to the League of Portugal, guys. Can Sporting still win the title without Ruben Amaru? I think they can. You know what I think is going to hurt Ruben Sporting more? Is Victor Gokoras leaving. If Victor Gokoras leaves in the Jerry window, then I think it's going to be tougher as Sporting. Because I actually think, this is this might come as a crazy opinion, guys. But I actually think Sporting is going to miss Gokoras more than Ruben Amaru. Ruben Amaru is doing an amazing job with the team. The team is looking great. It's just that I think Gokoras is a huge player because he's been so integral. He's been scoring so many goals this season. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see if Sporting can do it. And remember, Sporting are unbeaten, guys. Sporting, I haven't dropped any points. They're one of the few teams that have... Like, I think they might be the only team in the top the top European leagues with a perfect record, which is actually amazing to see. So, it'll be interesting to see if Sporting can do it, man. It'll be interesting to see if Sporting can do it. Um, and I, I'm very sad that Ruben Amin is leaving, man, because I think he's done such an amazing job. I would love to see what they've done in the Champions League in particular, but <clears throat> it is what it is. And for Sporting, as I said, man, can they still do back-to-back? -back? I still look at the favorites to do so because Benfica look a bit shaky, guys. And Porto, I feel like there's a lot of change. I think Porto has a lot of change, and I'm not sure if Porto can do it. But we'll see, man. If Gokoras leaves, then we might have a fascinating hour race. But if Gokoras stays for the end of the season, which he should, in my opinion, then I think Sporting will do it. So it all depends on Gokoras, in my opinion. At the final, the final league we're going to discuss about, guys, is PSV. They're divisive. I think PSV are looking great, guys. I think PSV should be able to win this league title. Although, I actually look strong, guys. I actually are now pushing, picking up form. But I think PSV are too strong with the players like Tillman, uh, Pepe as well, um, and etc. And I think um, PSV is going to do this. I think they just have too much quality. And I think IX, as good as IX are, I just don't think they have the quality compared to PSV to win this league title. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this one, guys. I think this is around 32 minutes. So, if you stick all the way to the end of the video, guys, comment below. Hashtag 80 Army so I know who the true guys are. And I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.